Hey, 49 fans, I'm Thomas Monk. We're about to get into a detailed preview of 49ers versus the Washington football team coming up on Sunday. A little bit trickier of a game than we thought. First, though, I want your score predictions down below in the comment section. There's a pinned comment down there. I want to see what you guys think. Who are you lean towards? 49ers? Is it Washington? Give me who wins in a score prediction down below. All right, so as you know, this is a good preview, a detailed preview of the matchup between the 5-7 and seven Washington football team and the 5-7 and seven San Francisco 49ers. Now, a couple weeks ago, we would ask me this question, Thomas, is the Washington football team an easy win? I would have said, yes, it's an easy win, not a problem, no worries. Well, not anymore. This becomes a lot more tricky of a football game and one that we need to go ahead and dive into. First off, San Francisco, we did, we'll see this many times today, that they need to win. I mean, look at this, last five games, only one win, one of their last four. That was a very impressive Rams win, but other than that, they lost double digits to the Bills, double digits to the Packers, double digits to the Saints, and almost double digits to the Seahawks. They need to figure out a way to beat the Washington football team because guess what? Washington is hot, Washington is playing great, and they have won four of their last or three of their last five games, including each of the last three. Two against bad opponents, Cowboys and Bengals, but that Steeler win was eye-opening, was impressive, and honestly has set the Washington football team up to potentially be a playoff team in the very, very bad NFC least. Washington is hot, and they're going into this football game trying to expand on what was, again, one of the more impressive wins by a losing record football team against the Steelers on Monday afternoon. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the NFC playoff picture, which explains why this game is so, so important, because right now, San Francisco is 11th. They are out of the playoff picture, but obviously, you can still get back in if they were to somehow go ahead and win this football game and then possibly win out. I mean, the 7th seed, the 6th seed are very real possibilities. 7th seed is kind of their best shot right now. The NFC West, as we both, as we both know, basically not going to happen. It's either be Seattle or the Rams. Washington has no shot at being a wild card team, in my opinion, unless they really want to win out. Tough to do, but they have a very real shot of being a, a, uh, the NFC East champ because the Giants and them have the same record. And of course, the Washington football team can win out, win the NFC East, and then be a four seed and host a home playoff game, which is very, very crazy. So obviously a very, very important game overall. We'll talk more about that here coming up in just a little bit. But this for the 49ers begins the four game stretch that is an absolutely massive game and an absolute must win. I said this yesterday on the 49ers report doing our uh, recap of the Monday night loss. They can't lose now. I mean, you got four games left. You can't lose a single one. And so if you lose against the Washington football team, then guess what? You have three meaningless games the following three weeks. If you beat them, you probably beat Dallas the next week and then setting up critical, very important and interesting games against the Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks. But right now, again, a massive game, a must-win football game. We cannot express that enough, and it's going to be a tough one against a very, very good Washington football team. All right, let's take a look at our matchup odds right now. San Francisco currently four game, uh, four point favorites in this one. Obviously, it's going to be in San Francisco, or I should say in Arizona. It's a home game for the 49ers. They'll be back at Cardinal Stadium due to the whole COVID issues right now. Over-under is low, 43.5. We understand this. And like I said, the fact that 49ers are four-point favorites to me is a little bit surprising just based on the fact that I think Washington was a nine-point underdog last week against the Steelers, and suddenly they're still a four-point underdog against a bad, or at least a, a 49er team that has lost the past couple of games. This is a little bit surprising to me. Like this video if you guys think San Francisco is going to win this. Like I really want to see how many likes we can get and how positive you guys are in the 49ers going forward. I asked for comments. I'm going to say I wanted your score prediction, but I want to see you hit that like button. If you guys think for real, San Francisco is going to go ahead and win this football game. Trying to get 200 plus likes here on this video. If you guys still feel confident, give this video a thumbs up right now. While we're at it, go ahead and give you guys our Bet US jersey giveaway we're still doing right now. So as we said, even though betting on the 49ers is not necessarily, I mean, it's not been bad this year. It's not been great this year. We can still bet on them with a new incentive with this jersey promo giveaway. So for all new, new Bet US customers only who sign up and deposit $100 or more with us at BetUS, we will send you a free Nike official Nick Bosa or George Kittle jersey. So all you got to do is make your first deposit of $100 or more and do it at chatsports.com forward slash 49bet and use the promo code Niners125. Got to do both of those things after you put your deposit down. Email us 49ers at chatsports.com to redeem your jersey. We'll get you that one shipped out to you. Again, either the Nick Bosa red or the George Kittle Nike red uh, legend in scarlet red. Nike red one. You see it on your screen right now. It's the real deal. It's fantastic. A great promo here. So go ahead and jump on that. Again, got to use our links. Got to use our promo code. And then shoot us an email there. Chatsports at chatsports.com. 
four slash four nine bet. Okay, when you look at the overall offensive rankings of the uh, the Washington football team, nothing really stands out. They're not good in points per game. They're 25th. They're not good in yards per game. They're 26th. Passing, I mean, rushing, turnover. I mean, overall, it's a very mediocre offense. So how have they been winning? Well, even though it's a mediocre offense, they still have some decent skill players. They run the football very, very well. And they have one of the better wide receivers up and coming in the National Football League and Terry McLaurin. Their key players are, in my opinion, these five. Alex Smith who's not been great. Talk about him in a second, but again, winning football games. Terry McLaurin, who's their best offensive weapon. J.D. McKissick, who's one of the better receiving running backs in the National Football League. Ten catches last week. And then, of course, Chase Young, their defensive end. Always a real problem alongside Ryan Kerrigan. And Ronald Darby, who was an ex-Eagle who was terrible last year and suddenly is one of the better corners in the league, leading what is one of the top pass defenses in the National Football League. McLaurin is balling. Obviously, he is great. We talked about that a lot here. We continue, Will, on this show. you got to figure out a way to stop him. Alex Smith is a real question mark here because he's 3-1 and one as a starter, but the stats aren't great. Four touchdowns, five picks. Like, he's not the Alex Smith of old, you know, pre-17 surgeries on his leg. Great story. I mean, we're happy for Alex Smith. Obviously, the fact that he's back on the football field is crazy cool, and the fact that he's winning football games is crazy cool as well. But this is not an Alex Smith and a Washington offense that's going to put up 30 points a game, but they are still going to find ways to get the ball into Terry McLaurin's hands, and they're going to find ways to get the ball into the running back's hands as well. They play great defense, which we'll talk about. And their ability to hold the football in time of possession is very, very important for them going forward. So the McLaurin issue is going to be a massive issue for the 49ers because they could not handle Stephon Diggs and uh, Cole Beasley last week. So the hope is that Sherman or Verrett can slow down T-Mac. I mean, if they if, if they don't, McLaurin could have a very, very big day. If I had him in fantasy, I'd start him in fantasy this week for sure. Who should cover him? Sherman or Verrett one-on-one? -on -one? I think they'll put Sherman on him. I would not be surprised if Sherman shadows McLaurin the entire day because Verrett got abused by Stephon Diggs last week. Quick mention on the running backs again. They have three. They, they, they switch between Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick, and Peyton Barber. But a recent report today from the NFL Network's Ian Rappaport suggests that looks like Antonio Gibson has a bad case of turf toe, and he will be out on Sunday or is leaning towards being out. Not officially out, but we all know he's probably going to be out on Sunday. So a lot of J.D. McKissick, a lot of Peyton Barber, and they do run the football very, very well. Defensively, it's where they're scary. This is where the, the issues come for the San Francisco 49ers because they should be able to keep the, the Washington football team under 24 points, but can they score more than 24 points offensively? I mean, this is the eighth ranked in points per game, the fourth against uh, in total yards, their third against the pass, their 10th in rushing, and they're tied for third in sacks. I mean, this defense, out of nowhere, no one predicted them to be this good. We thought they'd be I mean, decent with Chase Young, but the secondary looked bad. Not the case. They've been absolutely incredible. And so you got to find a way to not only run the football, but throw somehow and find Brandon Ayuk and find Debo Samuel because these guys really get after it and they are they're scary. I mean, this is this is the real fear here. You're not playing you're playing a five and seven team that's maybe five and seven offensively, but they are not five and seven defensively. They absolutely shut down all of those great Steeler wide receivers and really slowed down one of the better offenses on Monday in Pittsburgh. You guys think we're going to score more than 21? I mean, you're going to have to. Like, there's no way you're going to win if you don't score more than 21. You think we will? Type Y down below for yes. Type N down below for no. And while you're getting those answers in, I'd like to read the comments. I'll reply to some of the best ones I see. Make sure you guys are subscribed, up to date for our latest news and rumors because there's some injury news upcoming, I think, later on this week. We're going to break down on our live Q&A. Montez Sweat might be leading the team in sacks. Of course, the rook, or the second-year guy uh, out of Mississippi State, but they still have Ryan Kerrigan. They have Tim Settle, who's been really, really good. He's S5, even though you probably haven't heard of him. And, of course, Chase Young, who's been very disruptive, a little less productive than we were hoping, or I guess the, the Washington football team was hoping. He hasn't had the, the Nick Bosa rookie year, but still a very good year overall. But that's a front four that can get after San Francisco, a team that has had yeah, decent games at the O-line position. They've had terrible games at the O-line position, but this is going to be a battle up front every single day. And then you go to the backside, they get good pressure. And like I said, Ronald Darby one-on-one -on -one has been absolutely fantastic. He's going to be on Ayuk. He's going to be on Debo. They move him around. It's not necessarily a guy that you can just scheme to one side of the football field. Ayuk and Debo have got to have got to find out ways to get open around this uh, secondary, the way Nick Mullins has some easy passing lanes, because this team can get interceptions. And Darby is one of the ones who's been absolutely fantastic so far this year for them. Who on offense needs to step up for San Francisco? Which is the player that you've got to, you know, see have a big game in order for the 49ers to win the football game? I want to know what you guys think down below. I I'm leaning towards, I mean, Nick Mullins is the easy one to go ahead and say. And obviously, we, I mean... Mullins is obviously number one, right? He, Mullins last week I thought was pretty good. Two picks weren't really his fault, in my opinion. If he has a game similar to that minus the picks, they probably beat the Bills, and I think they could beat the Washington football team. So we'll say Mullins obviously is one of them. But I also think that Raheem Mostert, I, we said this on yesterday, Mostert had nine carries last week. 
I mean, nine for 42 yards. Why is he getting so few carries? If he's injured, let us know. I mean, that could be a real possibility. If he's still banged up on a pitch count, that's fine. But if not, this needs to be 16, 17 carries, especially with the, uh, you know, the, 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 the nothing burger Tevin Coleman has been giving you. If you want to split it between him and Jeff Wilson Jr., make it 70-30, not 50-50 like it was last week. So I put Mostert there at number two. And finally, because Terry McLaurin is so good, Richard Sherman, you've got to find a way to slow down McLaurin or else he's going to feast on this 49er secondary much like Diggs and Beasley did. Now, Josh Allen, Diggs, Beasley, they're all better than what the Washington football team has, the Alex Smith, the Terry McLaurins, but still, Richard Sherman had a rough game last week. I mean, you can even throw in Jason Verrett had an even worse game. This secondary needs to calm down, figure things out. That way they can get stops in order to let the defense or the offense get back on the football field and try and score points. It's going to be low scoring. Like, this is going to be a low scoring football game. It's going to be an ugly football game, in my opinion. <laughs> Excuse me, if San Francisco wants to keep their playoff hopes alive, they have to win. And so my prediction, honestly, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and take the Washington or Washington. I'm gonna take the 49ers. Even though I don't feel great about this game, they have to win. So I have to take them. 21 to 17. I think that is where you go right now for San Francisco. They just get that 21-point uh, uh, margin that you kind of need to get to to go ahead and beat Washington. Also, before we go uh, later on in the video, just make sure you guys stay tuned. We're going to do a preview for this week on who you need to root for. If the Niners win, who needs to lose to be able to bounce them up in the playoff picture, which we can actually go to right now, actually. Here's the playoff picture one more time, and who needs to win in Week 14. As they stand, Saints, Packers, Rams, Giants, Seahawks, Bucks, Vikings are your top seven. So obviously the guys towards the bottom there are the ones you got to root against. But you still need to root against the Arizona Cardinals, the Bears, and the Lions because the Indy Hunt area is where San Francisco currently lays. So here is your rooting guide for Week 14. You want the Bucks to beat the Vikings. That one's easy because the Bucks are pretty much locked in as the sixth seed. You're not going to be able to kind of supplant them as a 49er team. So beat the Vikings, get them down to six and seven. That will greatly help the 49ers who could get to six and seven with a win on Sunday. You want the Giants to beat the Cardinals. The Giants winning has no effect on San Francisco because they are not going for a wild card spot. They're going for the NFC East crown. So get Cardinals out of there. They would go to six and seven. That would be huge because they have a matchup with San Francisco coming up later. Root for the Giants. Texans over Bears, that's easy. AFC versus NFC. Deshaun Watson has been good this year. The team has been bad, but root for the Bears to stink. That's a very real possibility. Packers are locked into a one or two seed. That's very, very clear. Root for them for the Lions every single day. And then Patriots over Rams because that's a divisional matchup in terms of the Rams and the 49ers. So root for Cam Newton and the Patriots um, to win that football game. There you go. That's who to root for here for this Week 14 preview. Again, it's an interesting Washington football team because they're not great offensively. They were really bad early on, but they're starting to kind of peak, and they figured out great defense and a great secondary and run the football very, very well and find Terry McLaurin whenever they can, and they win football games. So don't overlook them. I don't think San Francisco will because the 49ers have lost four their, their, uh, three of their last four. I think this is a game 49ers can win. They have to win, and I think that they can go ahead and do that and keep their playoff hopes alive. And I hope that they do. That way we stay relevant here in the channel and stay relevant, obviously, as a 49er fan in general. Drop a like again if you guys think the 49ers are going to go ahead and beat the Washington football team. I feel good. I hope you guys feel good as well, and we'll obviously be doing a lot more coverage this week and obviously breaking down the game uh, coming up on Sunday afternoon. Ultimately, after today here in the 49ers Report, wanted to get you guys this preview here on a Wednesday. It's looking like a good week for a potential 49ers win. So we'll see what happens in the coming days here as Sunday uh, approaches very, very quickly. Ultimately, after today in the 49ers Report, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. The rest for today.